Uh, Barton, let me ask you, why does ESPN choose Penn here and not a half dozen others that might be just as good or better? Look, I think it's the brand. Um, I think what we're looking at is a battle of the brands. Um, so all of the bigger players in sports betting online in this country are uh, big brands that aren't going to play second fiddle easily to ESPN. Um, FanDuel, DraftKings, well-established, um, the casinos, MGM. Um, and uh, then you get down to Barstool, and you can get rid of Barstool and replace it with ESPN, and it makes sense. Um, I think that, that what Disney is, is eyeing here is the future of, um, of culture and media consumption. And I think what they're seeing is that the new generation um, is kind of fine sports betting additive to the experience, um, and they want to lean into it and have their brand, brand front and center. Um, you know, we just saw the opposite with Fox, where, you know, their Fox bet kind of deal, um, you know, was unwound. And part of that, I think, was, uh, you know, tension. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that, uh, you know, the partner there didn't want to make Fox bet the preeminent mm -hmm. brand. Um, they wanted to lean into FanDuel. And uh, so, you know, here they have a partner that's small enough that they'll let ESPN lead. And I think Disney likes that. So Disney likes the idea that they are going to be the undisputed senior partner in this deal. David, let me turn to you. Uh, why do you think this is good for Penn? What do they get out of it? Uh, and, and sort of answer what uh, Barton just talked about. Why Penn and why does Disney choose them over FanDuel or Caesars or whomever? Well, part of the, part of the answer, Tyler, is that those other entities are, are all set. Um, you know, with their with their enterprise and have been at it for quite some time. The way we've looked at sports betting from the beginning is the requirements are market entry, a brand, tech content, and technology, right? And so ESPN, you know, clearly is bringing you a brand. Penn brings them market entry, given the distribution that they have uh, around states and across the U.S. The questions that we have, you know, that were discussed on the call this morning are around uh, the technology platform. We know that Penn acquired uh, the Score Media uh, for $2 billion, uh, and that tech platform is being rolled out now across the U.S., and, and you know, we will, uh, we will see how, how well it performs. Uh, the content, as Contessa was talking about earlier, the, the, the parlays in the end game and the breadth has been winning. And I think that that's one of the questions investors are asking and discussed on the call this morning is how well will, will Pan in this new app be able to deliver content that engages and retains players uh, mm. over time? Uh, but you can see part of it, but part is still to come, Tyler. I, I am curious, Barton, and what Tyler mentioned earlier, which is does ESPN risk alienating its core uh, viewer at this point, or how mm. do you expect them to integrate this experience in the coming years? Look, I think that generationally it's changing, right? So it was kryptonite uh, 20 years ago to be associated with gambling. Um, now it's becoming kryptonite not to have some tie into that. Uh, it has to be part of your media offering. Uh, you know, the survey data is pretty clear. The younger generation wants gamification. They want some access to this. Um, so I think what Disney has done is they're actually leaning into the future of how people want to consume sports and how they want to engage with it. Um, very uh, hands-on kind of experience that I think they'll be able to provide with this deal um, that the other media company sports players may not be able to do because they're not going to be the leading brand. Uh, they might be a funnel, but they're not going to be the leading brand for the experience. David, why does ESPN have to own the betting platform, and how are the economics of that business? In other words, they benefit from sports betting, broadly speaking, parlays, whatever. It's more engagement, more interest in all of their broadcasts. Is the model for ESPN bet a better model than the current ESPN business model? And if not, why not just say, hey, we don't need to, to, to like, it's a totally different line of business. Economically, does it make sense for them to own it? Yeah, I, and, and I, I think it'd be interesting to have Barton weigh in on, on that, you know, for the, the depth of their business model. But presumably, they're in it to make money. Right. And I think what's been proven so far by the others, uh, DraftKings and FanDuel in particular, is that it's possible to make money. And I think that that was a discussion point earlier on in the evolution of this business in the U.S. Uh, was anyone ever going to turn a profit? Mm -hmm. And at this moment, what we're seeing is companies are turning a profit. My presumption is that ESPN is in it uh, to, to make money. Yeah. Um, Barton, very quick final question here. Does this deal make it more likely that eventually Disney spins off ESPN? 
Um, it could. It could. You could see, you know, deeper integration with betting. Um, I don't think Iger's there today, uh, but this kind of lays a path to go there if he changes his mind. Yeah. I, I, it, it just occurred to me that you have here then a, an integrated sports betting and sports franchise that could be very easily cleaved off at, at high enterprise value from the parent company, Disney, which is kind of in a different business uh, mm -hmm. these days. Barton Crockett, David, thank you very much. We appreciate it.